morning ACC. We're so glad that you're joining us online. It's been a uh, back to school week. We've been praying for all the teachers and students as they've gone back to classes and uh, that rhythm I know it might look different so we, we're praying for you. Hope that it's a great uh, school year and that you know there's restrictions that don't come into play that hinder it even more so. So we're praying for you. If you need any help or encouragement please connect with us. We want to walk this journey with you. Uh, a couple quick announcements for you today. Uh, the business meeting is going to go ahead on Monday, September 21st. That is in person 
and online. You don't have to come to the church to be a part of it. You can register online, and we will send you the information on how you can participate in the, uh, the conversation and to vote. Please go to accweb.ca backslash vote to, to register if you're coming to the building or if you're coming online uh, to be a part of the, the vote. Now, here's the thing. We're going to have multiple uh, sections here at the church where you can come and physically uh, distance yourself from other people. Uh, so it's going to be a safe environment for you. We will be having a painting crew coming in to paint the worship center, actually, uh, this next week. So there might be a bit of a fume in, in this room, but in the gym, and if necessary, if we need to use the children's center, we'll use that as well. So coming in person is an option. Staying at home and connecting is an option, too. And so we want to make every opportunity for you to connect uh, for this business meeting. So that's on Monday, September 21st at 7 o'clock. If you're coming in person, please come here a little early, no later than quarter to 7, so that we get people situated uh, so that we can start the meeting on time. Also, we're starting to have uh, people come back into the worship centers for our, uh, our church services. On October 4th, we are going to have a, a reopening, a soft launch uh, with a limited numbers. You will need to register as well for that. Um, and if you have any questions about the business meeting or the reopening or you want to get involved, please contact elders at accweb.ca. We're glad that you're with us here this morning. Uh, I just want to pray, and we're going to have a time for the offering and to pray for the offering and the service. Let's pray. Father, as we gather uh, online and in our homes, whether it's on Sunday or throughout the week, Lord, that this is a, a time of strengthening of your body, that the worship would, would uh, motivate us to, to put our gaze on you and not ourselves. May the, the words that Brandon speaks, uh, may they be challenging in our spirit and how we need to draw closer to you to become all in passionate Christ followers. So Father, as we gather in this time, at home, at work, wherever we might be, may we be blessed because of your spirit that we invite right now to come in. This offering, Lord, we give it to you that you would use it for your glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. because he listened to me. He listened as I begged for mercy. He listened so intently as I laid out my case before him. Death stared me in the face. Hell was hard on my heels. Up against it, I didn't know which way to turn. Then I called out to God for help. Please, God, I cried out, save my life. God is gracious. It is he who makes things right. Our most compassionate God, he takes the side of the helpless. When I was at the end of my rope, he saved me. I said to myself, relax and rest. God has showered you with blessings. Soul, you've been rescued from death. I, you have been rescued from tears. And you, foot, were kept from stumbling. I'm striding in the presence of God, and I'm alive in the land of the living. He's so beautiful. He's worthy of our praise. And we're going to sing this worship song that I just love that always reminds me of that um, the only thing that really matters is him and being in his presence. So uh, we're going to sing this. Sing along with us at home today as we worship. in your prayer. 
just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me.
This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. Hey, hey, ACC. Thanks for tuning in and checking us out today. Uh, it's great to be back. I had a great vacation, uh, and I'm super excited to share with you uh, a word today. Uh, as we get started this morning, uh, I just want to ask you one question as we get started. Do you have uh, one of those must-see TV shows that you, you, you just have to watch that you can't go a week without seeing? Um, you know, even now as we have, like, PBRs and, and recording shows and all that kind of stuff. It's one of those shows that you, you actually want to watch live. You want to see it the day it airs. And, and so you make it kind of like a, a point to, to watch it every, every week. Uh, maybe for some of you, I know that that's Survivor. Uh, for some of you, it might have been like Downton Abbey. Uh, for some of you, it's Hockey Night in Canada. You never miss a, a week of Hockey Night in Canada when the season's on. Uh, but for me, that show is The Curse of Oak Island. Now, I know I can, I can see your eyes rolling in the back of your head, like I can hear the collective groans across the World Wide Web, but for me, I love this show, like I can't get enough of it, and it's, it is like, it is a trap. I mean, there's probably only about 15 minutes of content for this, this hour-long show, uh, but every time I just think, oh, they find just one more little thing, and that keeps me coming back for more to see more of, of what kind of treasure they're going to discover on Oak Island. And plus, it's, it's Canadian content, so you can't go wrong with that, right? I mean, 
It's, it's awesome. And so I love, I love watching that show. It is just one of those things that, that kind of keeps my attention. Uh, but one of the parts that I love about the show the most is usually at the end of the season, they'll get all the guys together, what they call the fellowship of the dig, and they'll sit around in their war room, which is like this baby barn that they've got all decked out, and they sit around this table, and they, they basically just kind of unpack what they discovered that season and, and talk about the treasure a little bit and what that might mean and, and how those clues might help lead to discover more about the treasure. And, and usually they just take some time after that to, to, to look back and, and really, uh, from, a, from a large point of view, from a, from a 30,000 foot perspective, just say, hey, listen, let's, let's refocus again and make sure that this is what we want to do. And, and they kind of make a decision from there whether or not they go on with, with the dig. And, of course, they've done that for seven seasons now, and it, it'll probably happen again until they finally discover that there's probably nothing on Oak Island. But uh, it is just this, this moment of taking time to reflect, to refocus in on the, on the treasure, and to be able to, to kind of zoom in on what uh, that is in light of the bigger perspective. And so I want to do that a little bit today. I want us to kind of collectively sit around the war room table and, and just spend a few minutes reflecting on the treasure, uh, looking at the treasure, and, and what that means in light of everything that we are going through as a church. And, I mean, we're, we've got our own big projects on, on the go as well, as all of you know, and if you're uh, just a guest with us tuning in. I mean, we have so many different projects. We have a, we have a big vote coming up on September 21st. Uh, we also have reopening plans that, that we're launching for October. And, and so we have a lot of things on the go. Running in the background of all of this is COVID as well. So we have a lot going on. And so I want us to just collectively uh, spend some time refocusing uh, on the treasure in perspective of uh, the 30,000 foot view in light of all that we're going through. So to help us do that, we're going to look at 1 Peter. And 1 Peter is this awesome passage to help us unpack a, a little bit about where we're at right now because Peter is trying to accomplish some of the same things. Uh, he is writing to believers who are scattered all throughout what was Asia Minor at the time and what is now modern-day Turkey for us. And so he's, he's writing this kind of pastoral letter. He's, he's trying to encourage the people who are going through the ringer at this time. Uh, Nero is the emperor in Rome, and he is just dropping the hammer on people who call themselves followers of Jesus or Christians or these little Christs. And so it is a really hard time to be a follower of Jesus when Peter is writing this letter. And so he's writing this, this, this letter of encouragement to, to kind of spur on the followers of Jesus to refocus them, to help them get around the table, so to speak, and to focus in on the right things. And so it's important for us, uh, and it's really helpful for us, to kind of unpack what he says uh, in 1 Peter chapter 1. And so I want to just... Uh, dive into that a little bit this morning. We're going to look at, at 1 Peter 1, verses 3 to 9. But if you don't remember anything else today, uh, I want to just, here's the bottom line, here's where we're going. And I've got it framed in the negative, uh, but we'll unpack that a little bit. And it says this, uh, the bottom line, if you want to feel stressed, anxious, and fearful, bury the treasure. If you want to feel stressed, anxious, and fearful, bury the treasure. And so we're going to spend the rest of our time unpacking what that means, all right? So read with me, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. If you have your Bibles handy with you, or if you have your phones, scroll to this. It'll also be on the screen if you want to follow along. Uh, but picking up verse 3, it says this, All praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we have been born again, because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation, and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. 
And through your faith, God is protecting you by His power until you receive the salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad. There is a wonderful joy ahead. Even though you must endure many trials for a little while, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Through your fa- though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love Him even though you have never seen Him. Though you do not see Him now, you trust Him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting Him will be the salvation of your souls. And so it's awesome to see Peter just talk about this priceless inheritance or this treasure that that he's, he's writing about. And so uh, he, he talks about how as followers of Jesus, we inherit this, this priceless inheritance, this treasure. And, and he makes us understand and, and, and see a little bit that as followers of Jesus, there is something bigger than ourselves. There is something beyond what we see and experience in the here and now. And, and it's so special. This is so important for Peter that he, he reminds his readers that that. It's worth going through those temporary struggles. It's worth pressing through those challenges. It's worth kind of, kind of walking through that, that dark valley so that you can experience this priceless treasure, this priceless inheritance. And it's a call and it's a reminder that none of what we're going through, none of the challenges that Peter's readers were going through, none of the struggles that you and I are facing right now is, is so great that it will take away from that precious treasure. That all of our suffering won't be in vain uh, because of what Jesus has done. And so what he's doing by introducing this priceless treasure, this, this inheritance, what he's doing is he's reshifting the focus. He's changing the focus not from uh, the 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 giant problem that's right in front of us or the giant problem that's right in front of them. And believe me, for, for Peter's readers, it was, it was awful. It was awful. I can't articulate in a way to you, uh, in, in a way that it will uh, convey just how bad things were for them, what Nero was doing to them. Um, it, it's just too much to share. But it's important for us to say and, and keep in mind that what Peter is trying to do is, hey, hey, listen, I know all this stuff is going on around you, but this is what you need to focus in on. This is what you need to pay your attention to. This is what's most important. Uh, in light of everything going on around here, this inheritance, this priceless treasure, this is what I want you to zero your attention in on. And so he's shifting focus. He's making people see that there is something more than their present circumstance that they're going through. And so let me just unpack verse 4 a little bit because he, if, if, this, if this inheritance, if this treasure is so good, like what does he say about it? What does he describe it as? And, and really, verse 4, he really kind of breaks that down a little bit. He says this, And we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. So let's just kind of break those those two categories down. So first, pure and undefiled. Coming up on your screen, you're going to see a picture of a pit. This is the Berkeley pit, and it is found in Butte, Montana. Now, isn't that crazy looking? Like this red water, and it is it is considered, uh, at the time, before 19, the 1980s, it was considered the richest hill in the world. It was found in Butte, Montana, and it was really this, this mountain that they were mining, and in this mountain, they found all sorts of precious metals, you know, like copper and bronze and silver, and they were able to mine it out to, to kind of help feed the post-war movement, and, and so they were just digging and digging and digging until they finally discovered this new way of mining where they literally just like cut the top off the hill and just started digging a pit down, and eventually, what they did is they kind of hit a spring, and all this water started coming into the pit, and and what they had to do is they had to install pumps to kind of keep the water from coming out while they were mining. 
Then 1983 rolls along, and they kind of realize that, hey, we've kind of exhausted all the resources in, in Butte, and we're just going to shut it down, and we're going to turn off the pumps, and the water just started seeping in. Now, as the water started to fill in this big mining pit, uh, it started leaching out all these minerals and these metals that were in the ground and that the, the equipment and all that sort of stuff, and it created this toxic contaminated water. And so now it's no longer known as the richest hill in the world, but it is now the most contaminated body of water in the United States. It is, uh, it, the water is acidic. Uh, there, there's a news story about how a group of geese were flying over it and landed in the water to get a drink, and then they found all the geese bodies uh, like up, up on shore because the water was so toxic. There's no fish, there's no grass, there's nothing that's living uh, around this body of water, and it's more acidic than lemon juice. Uh, it is just a, it's a contaminated mess. And so the reason I'm sharing that cheery picture with you is that it is a, it's, a, it's kind of a really interesting picture of what our lives can look like. And, and what I found striking about this story of, of the Berkeley pit is that the contamination didn't come from like a, a toxic waste dump. It didn't come from a nuclear meltdown. It came from within the pit itself, from the water. As it rose up within the pit, it created this kind of contamination and this defilement. And as I, as I thought about that picture, that is just such an accurate reflection of our own lives. And whether we want to acknowledge it or not, Within our, the deep wellspring of our souls, there are contaminants. There is even maybe a level of toxicity in our hearts and our minds. And so it's important for us to understand that as people, we are broken. And even in the midst of COVID, this has probably been exacerbated even more. Um, because... We have spent some time away from our normal kind of communities. We've spent some time uh, isolated, and so we haven't had that kind of uh, community to deal with some of uh, the contamination in our hearts. Like what Al was sharing with last week, we need to have that kind of self-examination, that, that introspective action to kind of help deal with that contaminating aspect of our lives called sin. And so what we, what we see with this gift, though, what Peter is trying to help us deal with is that the, there is a, a gift that we receive from God through Jesus Christ that is pure and uncontaminated. And the grace and the beauty of the good news of Jesus is that we are contaminated and defiled, yet we are able to receive this beautiful and pure and uncontaminated gift. And so if that doesn't change our perspective, then I'm not sure what will. We receive this beautiful gift out of God's grace and out of his mercy. And, and so Peter is trying to help us realize that, that we can live with expectation, we can live with excitement, we can live with joy, even in the midst of our struggles because of this great and pure and, and perfect gift that we can receive, this beautiful treasure that we have. And that should shift our perspective. That should change the way we live. And so, so we first we have this, that, this, this idea of something that is pure, something that is undefiled. And then he says that this gift is beyond change and decay. And Peter is talking to people who are facing major suffering. All right, we need, I made that clear. Like they're facing death. They're seeing loved ones dying not just dying in, in their sleep in a peaceful way, but they're dying violent, horrible deaths because of what they believe. And so when that stuff is going on, I mean, that can, that can take our, our attention, can it? I mean, we're not, we're not being fed to lions or being lit up as human torches, but we are facing stresses and challenges and, and potential futures that we may not be able to quite handle in the right ways. In fact, they can become such a daunting perspective in the, in the front of our minds, whether it's the financial crisis. You know, if you're an entrepreneur or a business owner, this is a very stressful time for you. And, and if you're a teacher or an EA or, 
or someone who's in the school system right now, I mean, this is a stressful time for you. Changes have been made. Things are being, I mean, you're fixing the tire as the car is moving, right? It can be stressful. It can be challenging. It can be daunting. Um, whether we have family who are going through health problems, I mean, we, we all have these kind of giants who are standing in front of us and blocking our view from the treasure. And so it's important for us to realize that, that in this moment, when, when our perspective can be shifted to something that seems so much bigger in front of us, that we have a gift right here, right now, that will never change, that will be stable, that will provide that security that we need, and it is right here in front of us, and we need simply just change our gaze. We simply need to reorient ourselves towards something that is, that is beyond change and that will never decay. To kind of help drive home this point, uh, I have with me two different kind of foods. Here I have this gross old banana. You can see it like the top is falling off. Like this would be gross to eat. You know, it's, it's really gooey and it's really soft. Like it's probably, it's leaking its banana guts all over the table. Because it's, it will decay. It will break down. Uh, this can't last very long in our house or it will start to attract flies and it'll start to get all brown and it, it just won't last. It will never last. But then you have the pizza sauce, right? And this is my favorite pizza sauce, actually. I love this stuff so much. You could put this can of pizza sauce in the cupboard and come back in 2021 and it will still be just as good as when you put it in the first time. I mean, there's nothing, short of damaging the can, there is nothing that will, I mean, it doesn't even have an expiration date. I mean, which just goes to show, I mean, kind of the questionable nature of pizza sauce. But it also will show you that it, it is built to last, built to endure. And so when we're talking about this beautiful inheritance, this treasure that we have, it is pizza sauce not bananas, all right? And so it's important for us to recognize that there are things in our lives that we think are going to be there forever, that are going to be challenges forever, but they are really just bananas. They're really just, they're, they're going to wither, they're going to decay, they're going to go away. And we need to focus in on the thing that's pizza sauce. Now, surprise, I, I know you're shocked to think that Jesus gives maybe even a better illustration than bananas and pizza sauce. Uh, and he shares that in Matthew chapter 6. So let's look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21. He says this, Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them, and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasure in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. The treasures of this world are perishable. Jesus is saying, listen, there are things that we think are important, the things that we think are, are the reason for our lives, and they're, they're going to destroy, they're going to be destroyed. They're going to rust out. They're going to have something as insignificant as a moth can, can just get rid of it. And he's saying, listen, like, put your, put your trust, put your, put your faith, put your heart. Put your heart into something that's going to last. Again, shifting perspective. Changing our view from maybe that thing that's standing right in front of us that seems so daunting, that seems so stressful, that's causing us panic, that's causing us anxiety, that's giving, that's giving us uh, you know, this, this feeling, a sense of fear in our lives. And he's saying, listen, that stuff is that's temporary. This is what's eternal. Focus in on the treasure, because where your treasure is, that's where your heart is also. And Peter is just echoing these words. He's saying, listen, you need, you need to recognize the, the challenges in front of you are small bananas, are rotten bananas, compared to the, the untainted glory, the, the, the certainty and the security of the treasure that we have. And so we need to see things in light of what the Bible tells us is true. And focus on the treasure that can't be taken away from you. 
that can't be destroyed or stolen. So we've spent uh, the last little bit just talking about, about the treasure, but now let's talk about whom the treasure is. And that is the treasure is Jesus. The treasure is Jesus. The treasure is, is this thing, is Jesus is this person that we need to fix our eyes on, to send our, our, our focus in on, to spend our time engaging with. It is, it is Jesus who is the one who changes our perspective, the one who reorients our lives in such a way that it starts to make sense. He's the one who allows us to, to, to feel the impact of what life is really meant to be like. And if you're watching today and, and, and you don't know who Jesus is, let me tell you that He is the most precious thing that you can invest your life into. He is a treasure, a priceless inheritance. First Peter says that the impact of following Jesus is, is described like us being foreigners in a different country. First Peter 1.1, 1, 1, he starts out his letter by saying, I am writing to God's chosen people who are living as foreigners. Now, these people have been scattered from their native land, but he's also saying that, that, that the way we live our lives as followers of Jesus should make us feel like if it, make us feel like we were living in a different country. And not even a country where we look the same as everyone else, but a country where we are just totally different and we stand out in such a way. Picture yourself in Africa or in Asia, you know, somewhere where we just we are totally different. Our, our, our customs and our culture and our language and even our appearance is different. He's saying live in such a way that when we follow Jesus, when we are focused in on the treasure, that that impacts our lives in such a way that we look different. That we don't belong here. I mean, these people are weird. That they, they don't do the same things that everyone else does. He's saying that's what it looks like when we are all in on Jesus. When we're all in on the treasure. He says, live like a foreigner. And here's my fear, ACC. My fear is that so often we look like one of the locals. We don't look like foreigners in the world that we live in. This world is not our home. Are we acting like that? Are we keeping the ways of Jesus in front of us? Or have we put them aside and just kind of said, I'm going to embrace everything around me. I'm going to assimilate into the world around me. I'm going to embrace fear. I'm going to embrace panic and anxiety and stress. I think so often we kind of make that choice without even thinking about it sometimes. We just automatically go that way. It's our default. But Jesus calls us to live in a different way. And Peter describes what that kind of looks like in the rest of the verses that we read earlier on. In verse 6, he says, So be truly glad. There is a wonderful joy ahead. Even though you must endure many trials for a little while, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. Let me me put it this way. Um, We've kind of had a treasure theme throughout this whole sermon. And and when when we choose to embrace fear over faith, when we choose to embrace anxiety over trust, when we choose to to follow our own path instead of following the way of Jesus, that's like uh, throwing a scoop of dirt onto a buried treasure, right? It's just like burying that treasure deeper. What what we want to do with our lives is we we want to uncover the treasure. We want to show Jesus to the world. But yet when we choose to follow our own way, when we choose to embrace the, the, the world's method of living instead of the way that Jesus describes as the kingdom of God, what we're doing is we're just throwing a scoop of dirt back on the, on the treasure. We're burying it again so, so people can't see it in our lives. And folks, I, I want to just encourage us that as we, we go through these next weeks, this next season um, as, as a church, we need to be... We need to be uncovering the treasure. We need to be focusing in on Jesus, 
not throwing scoops back on the chest, not covering up the treasure. It's important for us to realize that, that as, we, as we take a moment and just pause for self-reflection, ask, ask yourself, what, do, what areas of my life do I need to deal with? What areas of my life do I see a little bit of contamination, a little bit of toxicity? What areas of my life am I, am I giving over to, to the world instead of trusting Jesus with? And so I, I, just take a second and, and think about that as you watch today. If you want to push pause, go ahead, push pause. And, and just allow that moment with the Holy Spirit to just search you. I mean, the scripture says, just search my heart and, and know my heart today, God. And I want to just encourage you to do that for a moment. And I, the kids might be running around, going crazy, I recognize. But just give yourself that second to think and, and allow God to speak to you. It might just start pulling out some things that you really need to deal with, some things that, that you haven't really wanted to, to talk about, that you've got buried deep down. And just allow God to, to deal with those things with you today. As we think about the vote, as we think about reopening, as we think about life in light of COVID, what are you showing to the world around you? What are you showing to the people in your life? Are you showing the priceless inheritance, the treasure that is found in Jesus Christ? Or are you showing them that, that you've given over to fear, that you've given over to, to panic, that you've given them over to, to stress and to worry and, and selfishness. Folks, that is the challenge for us as followers of Jesus each and every day, to choose the way of Jesus or to choose our own way. And all too often, we choose the wrong path, and I'm right there with you. But for us as, as ACC, I think it's good for us to get around the table to, to gather together in the war room and to just self-reflect and to look again at who Jesus is, to reflect on his graciousness, to reflect on his purity, to reflect on his perfectness, and to reflect on his stability and his, and his permanency and realize that Jesus is with us through all of these major decisions, that Jesus is with us through all of these choices, that the Holy Spirit is guiding us in each of these moments, and that in light of the big picture of the kingdom of God, that we are beloved and cherished children, sons and daughters of God. And so I pray that you would see the treasure once again, that you would value its pricelessness, and that you would live in light of who Jesus is. Let's pray. Father, as we uh, gather together uh, virtually and very soon in person, Lord, we just pray that you would help us to focus in on you. Lord, throughout this time, it's been easy for us to neglect the meeting together. It's been easy for us to walk away from what it means to be a follower of you. And so we just ask, God, that you would, in this moment, just draw us back to you, that you would invite us back into a deeper walk with you, that you would spark within our hearts and minds uh, and rekindle a desire to be with you. Lord, thank you so much for ACC. Thank you so much for what you have called us to be as the church. And so I pray that as, as followers of Jesus, we would come together, that we would join around the table and spend some time focusing in on who you are and what you have designed us to be. And so God, in light of who you are, we praise you and we worship you and we give you glory because of who you are. You are so deserving of everything that we have. And so we offer up ourselves, we offer up our lives as meager as that may seem for your glory and for your purposes. In Jesus' name we pray all these things together. Amen. I search the world But it couldn't fail me A man's empty praise And treasures of faith Are never enough And you came along And put 
You're the 